All right, guys, this is my review of the Smith & Wesson Extreme Ops. It is a $12 knife. It's the knife that I recommended if you wanted a cheap knife uh, or disposable knife. Did I mention it was uh, $12? Actually, one of my friends, Christopher, said he found one for like 10 bucks. I think that uh, depending on when you log on to Amazon, you might end up with different pricing. But I have not even unboxed this. This is the uh, first time I've actually laid hands on this particular iteration of this knife. Uh, I see that it is taped shut. So I'll just take another knife and open it up. By the way, guys, the knife that I'm opening it up with Definitely not a $12 knife, but we'll we'll talk more about that some other time, probably. Okay. Commensurate with the $12 knife is $12 packaging, as you might imagine. So let's set that there. Okay. Aluminum handles, that sweet little inlay, flipper and thumb stud construction tip down and pretty stiff actually so that's looks to be what you get for this price range um, i'll talk more about the tail of the tape and we'll test it for sharpness and edge retention in a second but like i said 12 dollars gets you this it is um not particularly heavy and it's not huge i mean it fits in my hand but it certainly doesn't really stick out the bottom and the grip is not uncomfortable but that is it. So we'll move on to some other things, but that's the unboxing. All right, guys, let's talk about what you get when you buy a $12 knife from um, Amazon, the Smith & Wesson Extreme Ops. The model is SWA24S. Did I, I mention it was a $12 knife? Uh, 7.1 inches overall length, 3.1 inch blade, approximately 3.5 to 3.8 ounces. Did not break out the scale, but I think that's about what it is. Carry is tip down, only tip down, not reversible. Um, if as long as you like tip down, that's the carry that you get. If you don't like tip down, then this is not the knife for you. Um, did I mention twelve dollars? The blade steel is seven CR seventeen MOV. That is a Chinese steel. It is metallurgically, I do believe, the equivalent of AUS eight. Um, I'm sure somebody who's uh, much more into steels can chime in and let me know how I'm wrong, but. Um, it is a stainless steel. Um, it does have chromium in it above the percentage that is required to make a steel stainless. That doesn't mean that it will never rust. It stains less. The handle is aluminum uh, liner lock. Um, so it's not going to be the strongest liner ever, but it is a locking blade. I uh, wouldn't subject it to batoning or smashing through a lot of stuff. Um, it does have a flipper and a thumb stud and with a little bit of work, I got it loose enough to where the flipper works and the lockup is pretty good. But I mentioned the pocket clip is not ambi. It is made in China, as one might expect for a $12 knife that you get off Amazon. Um, but that's the tail of the tape. Guys, for sharpness tests, there's really only a couple of things I do. One, uh, I attempt to shave some patch of hair off the back of my hand or my arm. Two, I'll take a page from a catalog because I don't have any phone books. Those things seem to be out of vogue these days. But a page from a catalog that is uh, nice and thin. And I attempt to cut a little bit to see if it'll cut nicely. And it little well, not bad actually. That's surprising. Out of box sharpness. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I don't think it's really sharp enough to do any of that. So 
It's not awful out of the box, but it's not great. Um, I'm going to attempt to sharpen it up some and uh, we'll see if I can actually get a decent edge on it. So stand by for that. All right, guys, so this part is not exciting and uh, I wasn't talking or anything. Also, my wife was watching uh, Below Deck on TV, so I thought I'd spare you guys having to listen to that. Whenever I sharpen a knife, there's a bunch of different things that I've used, um, but I usually gravitate back toward that Apex Edge Pro. It's about a $200, $250 item, so I know it's not cheap, but it really gives me a lot of control over the angles I put onto the sharpening bevel. And with multiple sharpening stones, I can take the um, polish down really, really nice. Uh, so I sped through this. The, if you want to see a video on how to sharpen with an Apex Edge Pro, there's probably a million of them on YouTube. It's not even really worth me messing with it. Then when I'm done, I usually switch over to a strop just in case there's uh, any leftover um, kind of mess on the edge or um, uh, when it rolls over, I forget what the heck it's called, but it'll come to me, the burr. Yeah, if there's any additional burr or something like that, the strop usually gets rid of it. So between those two things, uh, you can get a really good edge. I know they're belt-driven systems, and I've got one of those. Uh, I don't mind that one once I already have a good edge on a knife, but it's not typically where I start. So that's it. That's uh, the sharpening, and uh, I'll uh, return you back to the video. Always that catch Ooh, right there. There we go. So that's reasonable. Take a little cardboard, do a bunch of cuts because everybody loves cutting cardboard with their expensive knives. Still sort of there. Ooh, surprisingly not bad. All right, guys. Um, I have to tell you, here's my conclusions. I was surprised. This is never going to replace a $100 knife, um, much less one that's higher end than that. Um, but I got it to flip okay. I got it to take an edge that it held surprisingly well. I thought carving through cardboard would completely wreck it, uh, but this steel seems to be hard enough to put up with a little bit of that. Um, I think that it's not gonna hold an edge like a higher end steel, like a S30 or a M390, but you're not gonna get an S30 knife for 12 bucks. Um, there's a little teeny bit of play when it's extended, and that might be my fault for loosening that pivot slightly. The uh, liner lock, I don't know if you can see it, it kind of engages right in the middle of the blade. So I think that's going to be reasonably sturdy for a while in terms of wear and tear. I'm not a big fan of the partial serrated blade, but once again, we're talking $12. Uh, sharpened reasonably well. It uh, responded to a little drop of oil and a little loosening to give me the ability to actually use the uh, flipper. I know on uh, my friend Doug's knife, he uh, does not have the ability to get it to actually oh, mess it up there. doesn't have the ability to get it to flip. Um, his is super, super tight, so I might trade him 
and fix it for him. Um, considering doing a giveaway for this uh, and probably any of the other cheaper knives that I play with, which means you'd get them after I've carved some with them, but also after I've put an edge on them. Let me know what you think about that. But like I said, $12. If you're complaining about a $12 knife, then it's time to step up your budget. Um, obviously, you've seen me carry around some knives that cost anywhere from 8 to 20 times this price. I don't know. But uh, if you need a cheap knife that is sort of serviceable and you won't cry if you lose it or it breaks, it is hard to go wrong with this one. Um, that's my thought. So take it for what it is. Uh, guys, do me a favor, like, subscribe, uh, share with your friends. Um, I think I have like 58 subscribers now, but uh, I'm going to do some more knife tests and probably some more shooting videos in the near future. But I'll talk to you guys soon.